And now as far as which of these go to which of these, it doesn't really matter. It does matter which ports you pick on there. And I'll experiment to see which one's the best. You know, like I said, these are on the, the blank ones. I don't think they're gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a shot just to, to see what happens. Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, now it's time to install external antennas on the new Arcadian KVD21 T-Mobile home internet 5G gateway. It's quite a mouthful, but it's sitting right back here. I already took it apart and I have a separate video on how you do that, so I won't touch on that at all. And now we'll just talk about installing the antenna, which ports to use, what antenna to use somewhat. And you know, I've done this study on my Nokia, the uh, gray trash can, and I didn't get the best results. I tried lots of different, um, now some of them were much cheaper options that were available on Amazon. This time I went with Waveform, and so I got their kit, which I must admit is awfully nice because it's a it's an all-in-one kit that gives you everything you need, including the little um, U.FL connectors for these uh, gateways, and the good news is both of these gateways use the same connector so for example if you already have an antenna kit for the Nokia it will literally work with the Arcadian one as well so let me open up this um, waveform kit show you what's in there you don't have to buy this one but if you do want this one I do have a referral link down below it gives you 5% off discount from their from their website I think it's $240 right now and um, let's open it up and see what they give us All right, the first thing I'm gonna say about them is they give really good service. So I did contact them uh, prior to getting this and I said, hey, you know, what do you recommend? What th lessons and learnings have you had from customer bases? And that's kind of how they created this kit was based off feedback from people, what they liked, what they didn't like. One thing they just changed on it actually is the cables. So now they have a, uh, they call it like a twin cable, but it's a smaller, diameter cable, it is slightly higher loss. So anytime you run a cable from an antenna to a, a gateway or modem, you're going to have loss in that cable. And that's where you wanna have good quality uh, cables and then you also wanna have as short of a distance as possible. So you don't wanna have your gateway down in the basement and run it all the way up and outside and over um, and have this you know, 150 foot cable. You wanna keep it as short as possible. But the downside, to like the type N connectors, which are outdoor weather rated, is they're huge. You know, these things are uh, very large in diameter and then you have two of them and you try to get them through a hole, as well as the, if you have LMR 400 cabling or something, it's very large, you can put a large hole through the wall. So anyways, they have gone to a cable that gets slightly worse uh, loss. So before the old cable was about 1.7 dB and this time it's now 3.3 dB. And the antenna gain is around 11 dB. So you can see that you do lose um, some of your um, gain, but really the, one of the other gains on top of the 11 dB is your ability to place it somewhere. That's, that's gonna give you a lot of gain as well. So um, anyways, the kit has the, and, and this kit I did get the lightning um, protectors they're an extra hundred bucks for the pair of them, but obviously if you fry some of your electronics, you know, I have my, my own personal router and stuff hooked up to it, um, it's kind of worth it just to get the protection. You do have to ground that um, in there, but you can ground that uh, with your typical house ground. So it gives you two of these uh, type N cables with the lightning protectors. That's these two. And then, this is the main cabling. It's 30 feet of cable and it has the type N to the SMA. So the SMA is the much smaller connector. All right, so just to show you, here's the type N, here's the SMA. And you can see quite the size difference there between these two cables, or sorry, these two connectors. And then with the kit, you get the type N to SMA uh, adapters so you can um, hook it up and then they also include both the F or sorry the UFL pigtails 
as well as these are TS9, yeah, TS9 pigtails, which these uh, some other um, modems, hotspots, they use this TS9 connector. So they give you both included in the packet in there. And then the last thing they give you is the J mount. So this is like a universal mount that you can put on the side of the house. This clips in here and then this allows you to uh, have you know any kind of angle that you need to uh, to point it and then when the little uh, antennas are on there they can rotate this way so you get all all um, you know um, different uh, options for how to mount it so here's the antenna and they really make two types two main types one is the panel which is what this is and the other one is a log periodic directional antenna some people call them uh, Yagi, but um, that's actually the wrong term for it. But they can both, they both are rated at the 11 dB for gain. The difference is this one is better at blocking uh, unwanted signals that are bouncing off the backside. And it is therefore better for when they say you don't have direct line of sight or when you have lots of trees or hills or something in between you and the um, the tower now I am about a mile away I don't have direct line of sight as far as being able to see it with the trees in the way but in general when I'm up there on the third floor I pretty much have line of sight I have no earth or buildings between me and the towers but it goes through some trees but the higher up I go the fewer amount of trees I really have to go through so for me I really could have gone either way I could have gone with the panel or the um, log periodic ones uh, we're gonna try this one out and and test it so let me get the bracket here to mount it that comes so like i said all this stuff comes included i don't think you need a single thing other than i think the only thing they kind of recommend is on these connectors that are outside is to use some of the self-fusing uh, silicone tape so this is like a silicone tape that you stretch and you wrap around and it self um adhere, adheres to itself it makes a watertight seal. So that's the only thing that I think does not come in the kit that you might want other than uh, screws to actually mount this to your house or however you're gonna mount it. So a uh, pretty inclusive kit. All right, so now I have it all kind of hand tight. And obviously this one, it'll cut into the metal pipe. So if you have this outside, you really do wanna loosen it up so that you're not um, gouging that paint off and making it rust early. But, um, this is how it's set up and now you can see you can rotate up and down like this and then you can rotate this guy left and right and then you can also again rotate the antenna relative to the pipe somewhat in this guy here so you got lots of adjustment to to play with it but what i'm going to do is first i'm going to plug it in and i'm going to test it right here close to where the gateway is just to see if it makes a difference and i also have to play with what ports do i go on on this arcadian gateway now just to show you, this is their instruction packet that comes with a kit, and it's all full color. Uh, they tell you, you know, they tell you a list of the names of the employees. If you have questions, to call and email them, and they really walk you through a lot, a lot of things that I'm going to talk about as far as how do you mount it, how's the setup go, how do you test for it, as well as uh, giving you a sheet for where you can write down what your cell metrics are at all these different places so that you can track and they really do encourage you to try multiple different places so that you can really find your best uh, place to locate it because really the truth is this this cellular signal a lot of people don't fully grasp the understanding that it is very your mileage may vary so different areas are going to have different requirements they'll have different places to point it sometimes you're going to point it straight at the tower most of the time but if you have a lot of interference, you might actually need to place this antenna on a side of the house that maybe doesn't make sense to you and then still point it towards the uh, tower that you're connecting to, but you're using the house as a way to block the signal of other ones. And that's something you do, like if you have the poor signal to noise ratio, that could mean that you have lots of noise going on and you might actually be better off placing this where you're blocking more of the noise, even if it's not your best place for the highest gain of signal. So anyways, Let's get the gateway over here and see how to put these on the board itself. All right, so I looked at this Arcadian one and I got some of the, uh, the back door 
method for how to get all the signal to noise and bands and whatnot for this one. And I, I have decent signal. I'll put that up on the screen here, but there's obviously lots of room for improvement. And then my speed is not ideal. And one of the key things you can see here is my loaded ping at 1.2 seconds. So that's very bad. I'm hoping this antenna will help with that. This guy has four antenna ports just like the Nokia one does. It also has two additional ones that are labeled four and five that are empty. And they're right inside of here. I'm gonna hook up to them just to see if I get any difference in antenna um, or cell metrics. I'm guessing I'm not going to, but it's worth a shot. So to put these little UFLs on is pretty easy, especially once you have this guy all the way apart. Now, I told some of you guys you might be able to get to these front two D and M without having to take the back off or the sticker off. But if you want to get to any of these other ports, you're really going to have to um, take it all the way apart. All right, so it is not easy to get in here and get these guys. All right, so that number four is on. All right, got that one on. These things are not easy to get on. Got to be very delicate. You definitely don't want to, you know, break the board or do something like that. So. It's definitely a good idea to be, um, you know, safe than sorry. So be gentle with those ports. Get them lined up. Look at it from multiple angles. And now, as far as which of these go to which of these, it doesn't really matter. It does matter which ports you pick on there. And I'll experiment to see which one's the best. You know, like I said, these are on the the blank ones. I don't think they're going to work, but I'm going to give it a shot just to. To see what happens. All right, so a quick test with the four and five empty slots. I moved that antenna several different ways. It did not really seem to be making a difference, and my cell metrics really stayed about the same. They uh, they changed a little bit up or down, but kind of worse overall. And my speeds were a little bit worse, um, which you know 63 before here on fast.com. The speed test on that was a little bit worse as well. So. In general, it didn't help. Certainly no uh, no breakthrough there. So let's go to some of the other ports now. I'm gonna try D and M. All right, so that one's probably the hardest one back there, the M. You know, my trick to it is I try not to use a lot of force. These guys are really, really tiny and it's all about lining up the connector. So I just try to get it lined up and use a screwdriver to, to keep it flat, uh, but I try not to press a lot of force. I just wiggle it on and then it attaches. So that's a DNM, so let's hook it up to the antenna now and see what it does. Okay, so I tried DNM with this right here, and now I pick up this panel antenna and I point it around a little bit, but I'm keeping it in this same area. And I saw a little bit of improvement in my RSSI, but um, really nothing fantastic uh, you know I would almost say that it doesn't look like I have a um, external antenna on it but when I move it I am getting different numbers where typically if I leave this still it does uh, stay almost the same if I rotate then I can get different numbers but the speeds were really about the same the one thing I will say is the loaded ping did go down you know it's in this 300 millisecond range but I've seen that before and so it really is kind of like Sometimes it's test to test variation. This is the only thing I have connected to this guy, so it's not um, like I'm doing any kind of streaming or anything on this one. So now let me just try the other uh, ports, which is I think M1 and M2, and see if they do anything. If not, then you know it's just time to really go outside or upstairs to see what I can do with this antenna. All right, so I'm up here in my little third floor loft, and you can see I have my Arcadian one laying down here on the carpet having it in that position actually helped the best up here but I had the 
uh, external antenna cable ran out here and into the attic through this door. So we'll go there in just a second. I also tested the Nokia one and compared it to this. So I have some of that data as well. But one thing I'll say is the position of the gateway still matters. So just like before, you know, the gateways are very sensitive to where they go. It looks like this Arcadian one is not quite as sensitive, but it still does change your scores, your metrics, as well as your speeds. So when you place the antenna, also play with where your gateway is at, what orientation is at, because you can sometimes get a big difference. And now for me, the biggest difference up here was I would get on the N41 band, which gave me faster download speeds and also helped my ping go lower, but it actually hurts my upload speed. I'm a little confused by that because with 5G non-standalone, I thought only the 4G band is what connects you for upload and that all the download is supplemented with the 5G, but the 5G doesn't help the upload. So I'm a little confused by that because when I'm on N71 up here, I get five bars of it and my upload is two times or three times faster than when I'm on N41. And honestly, I kind of like the upload more than the download uh, when I'm up here in like the 200s um, range. So anyways, I'll go through here um, all the different scores, but let me go in the attic and just show you what I ended up with as far as a mounting. And you know, yes, I picked the attic and not the outdoors. A couple of reasons, right now it's like zero degrees outside and we got six inches of snow, so climbing on the roof is certainly not fun. And I could put something up temporarily, but um, the attic is where I was looking to install it and then I can easily install a pass-through on this wall here. So let's go out in the attic and just see how I mounted it. All right, so here we are in the attic. You can see I have it mounted up here just on one of these um, two by fours. And then I obviously, um, you know, oriented this. I went up here and changed it. I know that the tower is that way and it does work better when it's pointed that way. But then I just ran the wire uh, from there back down into the um, that loft right beside us. All right, so for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through all 35 of these in this video because it took me so much time to actually talk about them. I'm gonna make that its own video, so be sure to check back for that here in a couple of days. Or if you're watching this after a while, uh, look for the link in the description down below. So the high level summary of what I ended up getting to was when I had the gateway just down here, stock by itself with no external antenna, I was getting about 60 megabits per second down and 30 up. By the time I tried all my different things, I ended up being uh, connected with the waveform panel antenna to the um, antenna ports M and M1 on the Arcadian gateway itself. And then I also actually took the stock antennas that are the M and M1, and instead of leaving those wires dangling, I actually plugged them into the ports four and five on the gateway, the, they're labeled four and five on the gateway because they're unused. And it seemed to help me, um, you might wanna try with them on and with them off, but those uh, extra uh, two ports appear to be working. So uh, I would encourage you to maybe use those and then when I did that and combined with moving the gateway and the antenna upstairs to the third floor, including the antenna going into the attic, my best speed overall was 240 megabits per second download and 75 megabits per second upload. So obviously a significant increase What's that about uh, uh, four times increase in download and two, you know, over two times increase in upload. And like I said, that is not just from the antenna, but it's also from um, 
you know, being up there and being able to place the antenna in the attic where I can't put the gateway itself because of the extreme weather. Now, I am one mile from my tower. I don't quite have line of sight because of uh, trees. I have no uh, buildings or um, ground in between me and the tower. And so what this might mean is I might actually benefit from something like the log periodic antennas that are more focused and or they actually have a new antenna that is sort of designed around some of this 5G stuff like the N41 out of T-Mobile's um, 5G ultra capacity. So I think I might need to look and see if I can get a hold of one of those and test those out to see if that drives a big improvement. But you know, in the end, each situation is going to be different and I encourage you to experiment some, but I'm hoping by seeing what I've just gone through, um, I think I can tell you that ports M and M1 are the, the best to start with. And then you can also try to actually plug in those uh, extra uh, now unused stock antennas into those uh, ports four and five and see if that gives you the best speed. So let me know down in the comments below what type of speeds that you get and what type of external antenna you have and any other thoughts or learnings that you have uh, to share with everyone else. Thanks.